Well, it's good to be with you this morning. Uh, I know you usually see Father Mike, so ta-da, it's me, Father James, <laughs> here. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so i uh, got to make sure you're still paying attention and stuff, can recognize the difference. Um, so, uh, so today, you know, we do celebrate uh, the, the Passion of St. John, the Martyrdom of St. John, and St. John the Baptist is a very interesting figure in Christianity because he sort of sits at that threshold between the old covenants, you know, the prophets, the prophecies, the, the traditions of the old covenant, and Jesus Christ, and the new covenant, and this era of salvation. And so, uh, you know, he is this, this person that is tremendously significant. There was even, or there has been even over the ages, kind of a discussion, a holy argument that you may have never really heard of or, or thought about, but the holy argument was, is, to, is whether uh, John the Baptist is the, the greater figure or St. Joseph, the husband of Mary. And, and so what, is it St. Joseph or John the Baptist who's the greater? And I, I don't think that's an important discussion necessarily. I think that it's, it's something that's arbitrary, but uh, the understanding of how significant John the Baptist is. He uh, proclaims the coming of the Messiah, but unlike so many of the prophets before him, he actually is able to to see him himself with his own eyes, and uh, even, of course, baptizes Jesus in, in the, the River Jordan and testifies to him. And so, in that, uh, this is the feast of his martyrdom. So we're, celebra- we're celebrating that today, we're remembering that. And, you know, martyrdom, what is martyrdom? Martyrdom is, in the Catholic Church, it's, it's giving one's life up, uh, voluntarily or, or giving one's life up for the sake of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, not every death of every Catholic person is certainly a, a martyrdom, but uh, certainly that some are. And we think of the saint, the saint martyrs that we celebrate, and John is, is included, included among them. And so today, let's look at our, our gospel uh, we have the actual account of this, this whole scene. And so there, there are a few things going on here. Herod, uh, I think this is Herod Antipas, Antipas. Herod is this very broken person. He is a Jewish leader. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be a spiritual leader, not just a regulator for the Jewish people of his region, and he is a very, very immoral person, right? And we know that sometimes the people that are our leaders that are given to us, whether it's in civil life or in other departments of our lives, that they're they're not good people necessarily. And so he was in an an irregular marriage relationship, and uh, he was unrepentant. And so he, he has John, John the Baptist is in custody. And I've always found this line very striking. He, he found him very perplexing to listen to, but he liked to listen to him. And so the wisdom of God, the wisdom that is beyond this life and calls us to something so much greater than the goods and accomplishments of, he, of earth is, is, is a mysterious wisdom to someone who is consumed with worldly things. And so this is a picture of a, of a person, John, uh, that, of uh, Herodias, Herod and Herodias and his whole family are people that are uh, deeply in opposition to God. And, uh, and so, of course, we have the dance, we have, the, uh, we have this decision that is made to have John murdered, have him executed for no good reason, just to make good on a very uh, false oath, an oath that should not have been, have been made. And so what I'll just take from, from this this morning is we need to be sober about the reality of mortal sin. Of mortal sin 
uh, is something that we can commit and no one knows you know who is in that state any particular time usually for most people we go in and out of that state that's m most people we go in and out of moral sin over the course of our lives and hopefully God willing you know we'll die in the state of grace and that relationship with God but there are consequences to living out of that relationship and in this case it leads to, to murder right so a spiritual kind of death that leads to physical physical death and I say this because I think that sometimes going back to the basics to the building blocks is very very important what's wrong with the world well one of the things that's wrong with the world is that a lot of people are living in mortal sin and don't care you know they just don't care and you don't have to be a Catholic to be in that state you know it could be a lot of people so we need to be converted we need to listen to what God wants to tell us to allow God to speak to us and in order to not be those people that Jesus describes that heard his words but did not act on them in any way we are called to be people that hear the proclamation of the gospel and react to that to take it seriously you know all of us only have the time we have in our lives to become disciples and God wants us to all become intentional disciples people that are offering our whole lives our goods to him and are making our lives focused on him and if you do that if you live that way then you're going to turn away from evil and darkness and you're going to turn away from sin and you're going to allow Jesus Christ to reign in your life which is the opposite of, of, of moral sin so today I pray that the Lord will help us to 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 uh, certainly to imitate the uh, the steadfastness of John the Baptist and to allow his story to witness to us to continue to seek the Lord in everything we do